In this video, I want to introduce you to some of the mathematics behind game theory by delving deep into the prisoner's dilemma. Whether you've never heard about game theory or are an expert at it, I still hope that this video gives you some intuition for the topic. That being said, feel free to skip along to whatever segment in the video you understand best. Imagine that two criminals in a gang are arrested and isolated so that they can't communicate with each other. The police caught them for being involved in a minor crime, but they also have a strong suspicion that the same very criminals participated in a very serious one on that same day. The caveat is that they don't have enough evidence to prove it. Instead, they concoct a simple plan. Each prisoner is given a choice, confess or stay silent. If prisoner 1 confesses and 2 doesn't, then 1 gets set free and 2 gets a 4-year sentence. If both confess, then they each get 2 years in prison and if both of them stay silent, then the police won't have evidence, so they will both get 1 year for the other minor charge. Before we analyze the decisions they make, we have to assume that they don't have any personal loyalties to each other and cannot see each other's decisions. Now, let's represent the possible actions of the two criminals who are the players of this mathematical game. Since each player can make two choices, in total, there are four possible outcomes of this game. Let's represent these through a payoff matrix, a standard diagram used in game theory. The first two rows represent what player one can do confess or stay silent and likewise the two columns represent what player 2 can do and as we discussed this results in four total possibilities for the game. The colored numbers here known as payoffs represent the jail sentence each prisoner gets. It's negative because a larger jail sentence is worse for the prisoner. So for example when player 1 confesses and player 2 stays silent, that's this grid right here, then player 1 will get no jail time while player 2 gets 4 years in prison. Now let's analyze the possible move of each players. And let's look at this through player 1's perspective. If player 2 stays silent, the ideal move for player 1 would be to confess as he would get set free. And if player 2 confesses, then player 1 should idly confess to save himself from getting a 4-year sentence. As you can see, no matter what move the opponent makes, confessing is always the optimal move or the dominant strategy for player 1. And likewise, player 2 will also reach his conclusion and confess. The game has now reached its Nash equilibrium of confess-confess because neither player has any incentive to change their strategy. They've played their best move possible. This is a powerful example of game theory as it shows how even though better strategies like cooperation exist, because the two players are acting in self-interest, they will betray each other. Now, let's analyze the prisoner's dilemma a step further by observing what would happen if the game is repeated multiple times. Will the player's strategies change or will they stick to betrayal? Let's change the example slightly to iron out some technicalities. So now, instead of fighting for a reduced jail sentence, the two players are trying to get gold. The rules remain exactly the same and the game is identical. So just take a second to compare this payoff matrix with the previous one and digest this information. Now, this game is repeated a fixed number of times and each player is told how many rounds they'll play. They can also see what decision their opponent made at the end of a round in order to develop their strategies, but they still can't talk to each other. Just like earlier, after a completed round, each player earns a payoff in coins based on the decisions they make. And their total payoff, U, is the sum of payoffs of every round they play. Thus. The goal of both these players is to maximize you, that is, make as much money as possible. Let's analyze a repeated game with two rounds. Remember, the goal of each player is to maximize their payoffs. In round two, both players know this is the last game. It doesn't matter whether they trusted each other in the earlier round, because any future moves from round two have no consequence. 
What this means is that the last round of a finitely repeated game is identical to a single game. And we already know that the dominant strategy for that is betrayal. So in round two, both players will betray each other with complete certainty. So whatever they do in round one will have no effect on the future. And so they'll betray each other there too. Think of it this way. Because betrayal is an eventuality, the point of cooperating in the present is negligible. Mathematically, if the players play n games, the same result will arise. In the final round, they will betray each other. And because they know this, they will also betray each other in the n minus 1th round and the n minus 2nd round and so on. This will go on for every single round. What we have just done is a proof by backward induction where you reason backward in time from the future to the present. Once again, we see how betrayal is the dominant strategy even when multiple games are played, which is a rather somber result. But don't be sad, we aren't quite done yet. We still have to explore infinitely repeated games. When an infinite number of games are played, payoffs work very differently. You see, players essentially don't have to strategize at all because their total payoff, the sum of payoffs of every round, approaches infinity. So whether they cooperate or defect or do anything, they are still getting an infinite payoff. In order to prevent the game from breaking down, we need to make the players accountable for future decisions by limiting the maximum payoff. This can be done through the use of a discount factor, delta, which takes values between 0 and 1. After each subsequent round, this discount factor is raised to a higher power and multiplied to the payoff u sub n of that round. If, for example, the payoff of player 1 is u for every game he plays, his total payoff with delta accounted for will be u plus u delta plus u delta squared and so on. Since delta is less than 1, the value of each subsequent round decreases. And this effectively puts pressure on him to consider his decisions as the value of his payoff decreases over future rounds. Something you may also notice is that his total payoff forms an infinite geometric series with a common ratio delta. Thus, we can find the sum of the series for n games, which is u into 1 minus delta raised to n divided by 1 minus delta. Because the absolute value of delta is less than 1, this sum to infinity converges to a value, u divided by 1 minus delta. We now have a formula to find the total payoff for a player, if his payoff is constant, when infinite games are played. Let's apply this formula to the Grim Trigger strategy, which is one of the possible solutions to the infinitely repeated prisoner's dilemma. As the name suggests, the idea behind this strategy is to cooperate until the opponent betrays you, and the moment that happens, you betray them forever. Although this seems harsh, the idea of betraying the opponent forever if they betray you acts as a deterrent which forces cooperation. We first have to assume that both players follow the exact same strategy. Remember, the Grim Trigger strategy is purely defensive. So players will always cooperate until someone betrays each other. So if player 2 decides to cooperate forever, he will get a payoff of 3 each game, discounted by delta. So his total payoff would be 3 plus 3 delta and so on. And since we already have a formula for infinite payoff, this gives us 3 divided by 1 minus delta. Now, if player 2 decides to betray player 1 who cooperates, he would earn 4 coins. But player 1 would obviously get upset and trigger the betrayal strategy forever. And thus, player 2 would earn 2 coins in each subsequent round. So, his total payoff for infinite betrayal would be 4 in the initial game, plus 2 delta, plus 2 delta squared, and so on. Once again, we can convert this to simpler terms with the formula we know. For this trigger strategy to be feasible, the total payoff of infinite cooperation must be greater or equal to the total payoff earned for infinite betrayal. 
and this effectively means that 3 by 1 minus delta must be greater than or equal to 4 plus 2 delta divided by 1 minus delta. If we multiply 1 minus delta on both sides, expand the brackets, and simplify this algebraic expression, we get that delta must be greater than or equal to half. This not only shows us that the Grimm trigger strategy is a mathematically realistic solution, but also that cooperation when infinite games are played is indeed feasible. I think this result is beautiful. When one or finitely many games of the prisoner's dilemma were played, the solution was always betrayal. But as soon as we introduce infinities, strategies for cooperation seemingly emerged. I hope this video gives you a glimpse of how truly thought-provoking game theory is. The math we discussed in this video connects richly to real life, from evolutionary biology to political science. I've linked sources and extra reading so you can dive into this topic to your heart's content.